They stacked 189 deceased bodies in their funeral home and left them there to decompose, some of them for many years. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's case is a disturbing one because we all know losing a loved one is already such a traumatic and difficult thing to go through. Now, can you imagine giving your loved one's body to a funeral home expecting that they take good care of them, but instead do the complete opposite and dispose of them like a piece of trash? Well, that's exactly what happened in this case with these two funeral homeowners, John and Carrie Halford. They stacked 189 deceased bodies in their funeral home and left them there to decompose. So let's get into this case. 43-year-old John Halford and 46-year-old Carrie Halford are married. They own a funeral home named Return to Nature Funeral Home located in Penrose, Colorado. They opened their business in 2017 and offered both cremations and green burial. And what was different about them and something that they like to emphasize was that they put deceased bodies in biodegradable caskets. They describe their services as a natural way of taking care of your loved one with minimal environmental impact. But here's the thing, their business was not doing so great and John and Carrie were in a lot of financial debt. They also had many legal issues including missing tax payments, evictions from multiple properties, and various lawsuits including unpaid bills and this amount exceeded over a hundred and twenty thousand dollars so on october 3rd 2023 a neighbor called police to report a horrific odor coming from the funeral home located on 31 warner road on october 4th the very next day a colorado department of regulatory agencies investigator spoke with john halford and he asked him about the smell john's response was that he did taxidermy in the facility and that's why it had that foul odor. On this same day, an appointment between the investigator and John was set up for 2 p.m., but John never showed up and that was the last time law enforcement spoke to John. A search warrant was ordered on that same day. That's when law enforcement went in and they found 189 deceased bodies stacked on top of one another and some of them were not even in body bags. That is crazy. I can't even imagine that scene of walking into a room and just seeing bodies laying everywhere. They said that the smell was horrible and that there were insects and human decomposition fluids everywhere they said that an officer who walked into the scene got a reaction right away they had like a rash around their body so they had to be taken to the hospital and what's crazy is that while this search warrant was being conducted they noticed that a lot of the death dates on these bodies date back all the way to 2019 so you're telling me that these bodies have been sitting there for about four years and my question is how hasn't anyone who lives in the area smelled anything for the past four years why did it takes so long for these people to be caught now while trying to identify these bodies it was pretty difficult because they have been so badly decomposed the bodies that were identified they were looked into and their death certificates show that they were either cremated or buried but obviously that wasn't true because they were just sitting there with the rest of the bodies so essentially these people that have passed away their loved ones believe that they have been cremated or buried but that was never the case and they had no idea and then these family members have these ashes that are not their loved one's ashes one family member went into detail and said that they thought they had their loved one's ashes in this container but it turns out that it was actually just cement dust can you imagine that you thought you had your dad's or your mom's or your son's ashes but this entire time it was cement dust and this person said that they had no idea because both look very similar plus who would even think that someone would do such a thing so after the search warrant was done investigators still had no contact with john and carrie and it turns out that john turned off his phone and was trying to avoid any contact with law enforcement by mid-october phone records show that carrie went to oklahoma to essentially hide and they suspected that john was also with her now john and carrie had another location in colorado springs and after investigators contacted the landlord of this location he tells investigators that he has been in contact with john he recently sent john an eviction notice and john replied that he will not be returning to the business at all and that the landlord can do whatever he he wants with the things inside so 
that goes to show you that they don't plan on going back to Colorado and that they pretty much just want to hide out. On November 7th, not long after, felony arrest warrants were issued for John and Carrie and on October 8th, they were found at John's parents' house in Oklahoma hiding out. Now, a question that I had while looking at this case was what were John and Carrie doing with all the money that people were paying them for their services? I mean, I would assume that they're trying to pay off all this debt that they have, which I don't even know if they use the money for that. But I came across this TikToker and she basically explains what they did with this money. And let me just show you their Facebook post and what they were actually doing with this money. Here they are August 10th, 2021 on a family vacation in New York City at the Empire State Building. In October of 2021, it looks like they were actually trying to buy his grandparents' old house. And they say, we had a cash offer ready to go. Wonder where all that cash came from. Here's November 9th, 2021. Looks like they're in South Beach, Miami now, which is not cheap. Staying at a hotel right on the beach. And here they are just one month later in December of 2021, bragging about their nice hotel in San Francisco. And then in February of 2022, another vacation, this time to Vegas. Him and his wife and his family all going on these vacations. Here's a post from December 2021 talking about how he's so happy with where his businesses are at, the right people in the right place doing the right thing at the right time. Yeah, you were never doing the right thing. But I find it interesting how they were able to afford all these luxury trips despite having all this financial debt. And honestly, it's the disgusting to see someone brag in this way when they know all the harm they're doing to these people. It's clear that John and Carrie had zero shame or remorse for these families and victims. And something important I should mention and probably the reason why John and Carrie were able to go this long without being caught is because funeral homes in Colorado are not required to undergo routine inspections and fulfill qualification requirements. And because of that, state regulators have not visited the funeral home or contacted John and Carrie for over 10 months after their business registration expired in November 2022. So essentially, they continued with their business, taking people's money despite having an expired registration and no one knew because no one came in for a routine inspection or audit, so their operations were never disrupted. It's insane to me how they were still able to operate despite all of these things that they did not have in place. This entire case is so disturbing and I can't even imagine what these families are going through right now. Many of these families have spoken out and talk about how upset they are. We went to Hawaii to spread her ashes in the ocean which she wanted to turn out that they weren't were her ashes at all. The family learned their mother was never cremated and was one of the bodies found at Return to Nature Funeral Home in Penrose in early October. We hear decomposed bodies over and over and over again, but it's kind of an abstract term. I just don't think people realize just how horrific this really is. It's such a betrayal and you know, it's kind of like you're grieving all over again. So my heart goes out to these families and I hope that they can heal. This funeral home is set to be demolished in January so that these families can have some closure. And they're also doing this because it's the only way to get rid of the hazardous materials left inside the building. John and Carrie were charged with 190 counts of abuse of a corpse, five counts of theft, four counts of money laundering, and over 50 counts of forgery. It seems Seems like they're gonna be in prison for a very long time and that's pretty much it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and coming back to my channel i really appreciate it just a quick reminder if you like this type of content and you want to watch more of it i'm very active on tiktok i post every single day so i'm gonna leave it right here it's true crime kari and i'll see you guys in my next video bye